morning, everyone. Hope everybody's doing well. I am Dark Bull Algo, and thank you for joining me on another morning watch list building session. <laughs> All right, one second. I just got to get signed into the chat, and we will get going. Uh, so guess who had earnings yesterday? NVIDIA. Guess who did not really move off of earnings yesterday? NVIDIA. Wonder why that is. Hmm. We will check into it. That's why I hate trading earnings. So AMD ripped, Qualcomm ripped, uh, Intel ripped. Oh, I forgot a hat. Oh, well, you guys got to deal with it. Uh, let's see how bad my hair looks on camera. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I'm getting a hat. Screw that. Hold on. And there we go. Much better. Muy better. Much, much better. All right. Lots of earnings to get through. Uh, lots of news to cover most. And first, importantly, let me get the tweeter pulled up. There has been a few remarks about Ukraine and Russia. We just got to make sure we keep an eye on that stuff. And I think that that's going to be good for now. We have lots of earnings. Uh, welcome. I'm Dark Pool Algo. I'm a smart money Dark Pool block trade algorithm analyst. What I do is I look for divergences all day and I use a tool called Flow Trade for that. They've created their Flow Index. What it does is it tracks large institutions, hedge funds, smart monies, dark pools, and block trades created its own algorithm based on that. And what you get with it is you get this kind of stuff where the purple line is the uh, regular algorithm. Um, white bars are price action. See these green lines? That means that there's bullish divergence there. That means there's bearish divergence here. There's bearish divergence here. That played out, right? Flow index is heading one way. Price is heading the opposite way. Well, guess what? That divergence must play out. What we've been seeing lately is anytime these white dots appear below price, right? Those are dark pools that I believe print at that time. Okay. And guess what? Price has been coming down to meet those, right? In Tesla, for example, where's the dang move? Oh, where is that move? All right, so there's a regular block trade right here. Let me see if I can get zoomed in on it. Uh, I traded this yesterday, so I have firsthand experience of how this works out. Okay. All right, so I had a regular block trade come in at uh, 950 at the 914 dollar and five cent level okay at that time price action was selling off right right we came up right price you know price action was selling off well guess what happened price rallied up and gobbled up that block trade right so continue to rally up right pull back we had a block trade here that appeared it came up and ate that one it came up and ate, there's one right there that it ate, and it came up and ate those ones. It's like Pac-Man, right? We have bearish divergence that occurred here that will need to play out down to about here, meaning that at this point in time, all right, we had divergence between the direction of price action and the direction of the flow index, okay? So as those blocks appear, they will become magnets. So we're going to be paying a lot more attention to those as we go with through, through with things. So if you haven't been in the Discord with us yet, we're doing some pretty cool things over there. We've got um, we've got some heavy hitters that have come in that have brought that have followed us through from other groups that we're involved with. And it's starting to turn out to be pretty dang cool little little fam, little family we got going on there. Um, talk about disappointment. Roblox, serious disappointment, but they knew something. Right. They knew back on the ninth something was, you know, they knew they started taking profit. Right. They started selling out of their positions. OK. So we've got earnings. We've got other news. So, ooh, guess who had earnings yesterday? Y'all should know who this is. Let me just get this pulled up. Where is my chart? Where is my chart? Uh, 
All right, check it. Oh, guess who came out with earnings? Palantir. Yippers, Palantir came out with earnings. They didn't like that earnings, right? Immediate drop down to the... Oh, I changed my coloring on this to match what everybody else is doing. All right, immediate drop to the four hour bottom. Below that, they hit the daily bottom, bounced up through the four hour bottom, back testing it, and they're chilling right at the daily bottom or four hour bottom. So I'd look for Palantir move from four hour bottom, four hour mid, right? Or daily. Yeah, daily mid, four hour mid, four hour top, daily top. So pretty easy to see move here on Palantir. If we can keep this momentum going, break this flag, right? Palantir's trading at 12.33. Um, they have had earnings. I think this might be my next equity trade going into tomorrow. I'm liking it. I really am. I'm liking Palantir. So you could do the uh, $14 calls, possibly maybe the $15 calls. Those look real good. Let's see what those look like. On. I'm going to start pulling up. I'm going to start looking at options chains. I did, it's just something that I've got to do. Um, it's something that just has to be done because uh, I need to start getting some plays going. Oh, and while I love doing the morning stream with you all, guess what I do not like doing is not being able to play stocks during the day. Palantir. All right. We uh, don't need that. Uh, here we go. Kind of a dead cat bounce from 14 to 12. Came back up to about 13. We'll see how that move goes. From an options perspective, going out to March, right? These are well within our risk tolerance, right? I don't know what is going on here. Uh, 13s, we've got some pretty decent bid ask spread. They're at about buck 80 to two bucks. This was at the close, so these are going to become super cheap, right? March 11th, right? That gives us. 21 days, March 11, 13 calls at about a buck 80, right? Those should come down about to about a buck 50, right? Because there was a $2 drop. Yeah, I'm liking them. All right. But we do have to be careful. Like if we can trade back up into this zone, this is the only thing I don't like about this tool. Right, is I don't have the ability to draw zones, right? Trading zones, there's a trading zone there, right? A little bit of a drop down to the next trading zone. So, hmm. yeah, there's no, I don't have the, uh, the good old fashioned, I guess I could use this, right? But that's no fun. All right, anyway, that's your demand zone. There's a supply zone down here somewhere. All right, it runs probably like this. So if we can get back up into and above 1340, pretty easy move back up to 14, right? 50 cent move. Uh, Palantir does look pretty good. So we'll keep an eye on that sucker there. Um, I like it. Let's see if I can. Make a five minute chart look mo better. Yeah, there you go. A little bull flag forming. Slingshot squeeze getting ready to release. Mac, MACD crossover with a ready and fire crossover. Looking pretty healthy. Looking pretty healthy. Okay. Um, let me just do this. Make some notes. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, Matterport. Y'all remember this? MTTR. Shares are down 12%, right? Uh, more importantly, it broke through the daily bottom. 
it's in diffecta mode, right? I can't remember what they do. Hmm. Uh, what else? Oh, FSLY. Ooh, remember this one? This is why we didn't trade this a couple weeks ago. They had earnings coming up, right? FSLY. Uh, 18% falling key for EPS at a 10 cent loss versus 16 cent loss. 97 million on revenues versus 92. Hmm, something's going on with that. Why it died anyway. Uh, this is Difecta. This is different than dead cap bounce. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Cisco at earnings. CSCO. Nice earnings move, Cisco. Let's go, baby. Where's it at? Cisco. <laughs> Big's earning boosts, right? Cleared its 200. Uh, rallied all the way up to the daily top. Pulled back to the 4-hour top. Uh, Cisco above 56. Above 56.20 for a move to 57 and 57.50. You want to play it, slingshot squeeze releasing, going to be double green, right? Right off the four hour top above the 200, targeting the 50 day, right? 50 days at 58.50. So there's about a $2.50 move there on Cisco. Should be pretty decent. Apply materials, aim at. Nice earnings blowout. It's got the 50 day daily top resistance ahead off the weekly mid for our top, right? This has got room to move, but be aware there's a dividend day on the 22nd. So either play the rally to the dividend day and there will be a drop more than likely. Most stock prices drop on dividend day about the amount of the dividend. Okay. So you could look to probably pick it up for around this price out into next week. Right, so maybe wait a couple days, um, but it looks like it should have a pretty decent move today. 150 is obviously psychological level, and the daily top. So that move would be for our top weekly mid to the daily top, and then up back up into the monthly cloud, and then ride that cloud up to the weekly top. Right, it's been range bound. This look at this sucker. Can we say for our bottom, for our top? for our bottom, for our top, for our bottom, for our top. If it stays range bound, right? Then you just play the four hour bottom, for our top. It's using this 200 day on the four hour as kind of a, a guideline, right? It'll get a deviation or two out from it and then pull back, deviate, ooh. I wonder if I could create an indicator that runs a standard deviation off of the 200 moving average. What? Anybody know how to program indicators? I think I just came across something. Or the 50, right? Hmm. Might have to look into that a little more closely. So, uh, in Applied Materials looks pretty good for the day. Uh, NVIDIA Q4 adjusted EPS at 132 versus 122. I don't get this. Listen to these earnings. So they earnings per share, right? Uh, an additional 10 cent versus estimate, right? Uh, revenues at 7.62 billion versus 7.42. Adjusted gross margin of 67%. Guides one or Q1 revenue at 8.1 billion, plus or minus 2% versus estimated 7.2 billion. That's a billion dollar difference. Um, what stock was it recently that had earnings that was a billion dollar blowout? Oh. AMD. Like, look at AMD's earnings comparison to, to NVIDIA's, right? Very second. Was it Qualcomm? I can't remember. There's a, there's a company that had um, revenues in excess of $1 billion versus estimate. So I was fully anticipating NVIDIA to move uh, to 8,300, right? However, it didn't. So I think maybe, I don't know if a lot of this was built into it. This isn't that 
great of a pre-anticipatory run. But uh, anyway, uh, Q1 operating expenses 1.6 billion, and Q1 tax rate 11 to 13 percent minus plus or minus one percent. Right, Q1 gross margin of 67 percent. So those are amazing numbers. So I don't understand why it fell so flat. Right, just super flat. If I would have like 260, 270, 260, 250 iron fly, you would have been in the money, right? You would have been taking home all that credit. Anyway, enough about NVIDIA. <laughs> all right. Um, nothing really in media and telecom I'm interested in today. However, in materials and industrials, we've got some stuff coming through, right? Uh, maybe not. Allison Transmissions. All right, pretty decent earnings there. Looking to take over 42 again, All right? Watch this 5200 crossover when that happens. What is this business down here? Anyway, all right, healthcare. Acadia Pharmaceuticals resubmitted their application to the FDA seeking approval of its drug to treat hallucinations and delusions associated with Alzheimer's. Um, like, this is a pretty decent stock, right? If we would have got in back down here at like 22, wrote it to 28, pretty decent. They just resubmitted their app. Uh, the four hour top is kind of the high, right? I don't like these big swings though, right? They do have stack positive moving averages, volume, momentum, conviction, and news. This can continue on. If we do get a pullback to 2665, look to retest 28 and then possibly new <clears throat> new highs. Whoa, what is that? Uh, yeah, it may fill this move right here, this wick. But pretty decent looking stock. 10x genomics, TXG shares are down 18% versus or, uh, 16 cent loss per share versus 9 cent. Revenue 143 versus 148 and sees 2292 revenue at 600 to 630 versus 689, right? Kind of knew that was going to happen. That $100 level, psychological level, is so powerful. Super duper powerful. I believe this is one of those ARC stocks. So ARC probably is going to have a rough day today, right? Yeah, ARC's probably going to have a rough stock. I believe that that's the genome is one of their main stocks okay all right in ooh, in energy we've got lots of stuff to go over here real quick Oops. in energy s power remember s power was one of our fun ones we like we like to trade it s power i remember this stock used to be like 20 30 40 but 40 bucks ever since it broke below it's 5200 it's trying to get back up through it I would stay away until it starts trading this zone right here. And that zone runs 1650 to 1750 old dollar zones or for our bottom, for our mid, for our top, for our bottom to the mid, right? Above the mid, which is at 5200 as well. We hit for our top wedge breakout, right? The super safe play is above 1950 back up to 23. I don't know if you want to wait that long. AIG, I thought that, why are they in the energy? I thought that they were, is it AIG financial? Hmm. Uh, regardless, ripped up, tried to get out of its 50 day on lower time frames. We're looking at a four mid for our top magnet. So 60, I'd say 63 for today. I think we get there. Easy move above 61.85, no, excuse me. Yeah, 61.89, but yeah, look for a pullback, maybe a little bit of a flush, not quite down to the four hour bottom, right? Or the four hour mid, because that would, that would put us below the 200. We may wick down, like we may get a wick down here to the 21, to the 200, right? The $61 level for support. Even as low as, you know, 60, 50, 60, 87. So pull back to here, the 21 day on intraday. And then that move back up to four hour top. So there is a move from 60, 80 
to 63 AIG. They have weekly options. Get next week's, right? The uh, 63s. Uh, that's a horrible bid ask spread. Like, yeah. So when the bid ask spread is this big, the liquidity is horrible. You may be best at just grabbing. Yeah, it doesn't get good until you get deeper in the money. And let's see. Okay, I see you. I see you. That's not bad there. The 65's out into March 18th, right? Or uh, the 6250's, right? Those look pretty decent. Or the 60's, right? So there's an opportunity. Uh, it doesn't, like... It moves pretty decent, so we're looking at grabbing the 60s, right? So on the pullback, grabbing the 60s for that move back up to 63.50, right? This is a 30-minute chart. Um, uh, I just... Like, it doesn't move a whole lot, but it's been pretty decent, right? Up, 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 down, support, right? Up, very, very uptrending, right? The entire month, right? Pull back to support, rally into earnings. Had some pretty decent earnings, so just keep an eye and see what it does. Um, yeah, I don't know. They're, they're selling out of it pretty heftily. Now, is it forming a left inverted, or is it forming a head and shoulders? Ooh, very well, could be. We'd have to keep an eye on it. But just from what I can see, pretty safe to hold overnight. Rally, flat, little pullback, rally, flat, little pullback, rally. Right? This is a good swing straight stock. AIG, American International Group. I'll have to write that down. Maybe some AIG. Potential um, income play. Income plays are ones that you can play every day for a very specific amount, right? Okay. All right. Next up is where were we? Do 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 Trip Advisor. Uh, Trip was fun to play at one point. Yeah, I didn't like this. Ugh, this is horrible. This is death. Um, I would stay away from Trip Advisor for a little while. You can put an alert at uh, twenty eight, and then look at trading twenty seven fifty to about thirty. Right. An activist insider is seeking to add directors to Hasbro's board and is urging the toy maker to spin off the unit housing Dungeons and Dragons. Hmm. I mean, why wouldn't that be amazing news? Are you effing kidding me? Look at that. How do you even know about that move? 97105? Right, it's got weekly top incoming. Right. 105.73. Jeez. Any sort of pullback. Right. Back to 100 for a move to 105, possibly. Yeah, dude. Hasbro. Hmm. 
Yeah, if it can... So the safe move would be a pullback to uh, 99. And then play that 99 move back up to 103, right? Oh, look at that. Never mind. That's a big old gap. So 98 as support for move back. That's just incredible. Um, look at the options though. Nobody's trading this. All right. No one is trading this. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Fisker, right? We talked about them yesterday. Fisker Q4 EPS loss at 47 cents versus estimated loss at 47 cents. The year capex at 280 to 290 million. Says cash and equivalents 1.2 billion by end of as of end of December, right? They also came out prior to this and said that they're going to launch a new model of their electric vehicle. Okay, so while this stock was trading at 10 dollars at the end of last month, right? It was trading way above ten dollars. <laughs> Talk about a fall. Right. This is not the first time it's been down to ten. Next time it gets down to ten, let me know. Um, I'm gonna probably buy this. You could have doubled your money there in Yeah, you would have held had to held, but well, maybe we still buy it. Who knows? Uh, it should have a pretty decent move today. Um, I'd say above thirteen fifty for a move to fourteen fifty. So there's a dollar there if you want to get some commons, right? Buy hundred shares. You know, let it move a dollar. You made hundred dollars, right? Um, DoorDash, ooh, DoorDash had earnings. From what I understand, the DoorDash earnings were a spectacular thing to watch. Oh yeah, I can see why. Look at that, a little gapper. A little gappy to goo. All right, so if DoorDash can get back above its 50 day at 132, or 131.50, right, it can very easily move up to about 150. They got, Which is weird. So they their they lost their earnings per share loss was forty five cents versus twenty five cents, right? Revenue at one point three billion versus one point two eight billion. Marketplace GOV, right? Uh, point at thirty six percent. They see. Hold on, I gotta mute this. All right. They see. Did he? Did he? Did he? Dude, just their earnings look weird. See, his marketplace GOV at 11.4 billion to 11.8 billion in Q1, 48 billion to 50 billion in forward looking 22. Forward looking 22 adjusted EBI DTA at zero to 500 million versus 454 million. Like, what the? What's actually going on? Was it because they were so beat down? Right? Those are horrible earnings. Horrible. We live in a backwards world, I swear. Sam Adams. I love watching Sam Adams earnings. Just, just look at this. This isn't even as bad as it's been, right? This stock used to trade at $1,500 a share and it's now trading at 385. There's just no hope for it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Again, they say that their hard seltzer category growth fell well short of theirs and in industry's expectations. Announced Truly Vodka, the limited summer offering Truly Poolside, and an exciting new collaboration between Dogfish Head and Patagonia to launch an environmentally conscious Pilsner as new innovations for 22. We And we remain confident they can grow full year volume between 4 to 10 percent. Away from it. 
Stay away from the beer. Sam yeah, Adams, that is. All right. We have some key, we have lots of earnings today and some key events. Uh, a bunch of virtual conferences, Credit, Credit Suisse, Learlink, KBW. Um, after the close earnings, so earnings going into tomorrow, include Roku, QDEL. Remember, we traded QDEL last week. Um, run, right? Sun run. That's a fun one to trade. Um, the Dropbox is it DBX Dropbox? I think so. Yeah. Is that the big earnings? Is Roku? Is Roku really the only oh, APPN? No, Roku is really the only big earnings. Roku, Broku. Right. So Roku does have earnings today after the close. Um, Yeti had earnings this morning, but I didn't, they have earnings before the open. Right. Looks like they had some positive earnings. Hmm. Kind of flat. Right. Could have done an iron fly 65, 60, 65, 70, 65, 60, and made bank. Right. Why didn't I trade that sucker? Um, that's interesting that Roku is only the, is the only big boy earner or big boy for earnings. Hmm. Okay. All right. And, and just overview. Let's do this. All right. U S futures are looking lower. Back near the 200-day 200 moving, 200 moving average again for the S&P amid geopolitical concerns following reports Russia and Ukraine forces had each fired across ceasefire lines as per Reuters. Reuters. Moscow has amassed more than 100,000 troops near Ukraine, denies it is planning to invade its neighbor, and it said this week it is pulling back some troops. The West despite, disputes that there has been a significant withdrawal, and the U.S. said 1,000 more troops are still arriving. Elon Musk uh, accuses U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission of conducting unrelating investigations into him and Tesla. Musk, see, Musk says sees probes as effort to chill his free speech wants court hearing on SEC conduct. Why did I sell my Tesla put? Why did I sell my Tesla put? Oh, no. I'm so silly. I was having a bad day yesterday. I was super frustrated with Tesla. Super. I held through all of this BS, all of it, right? Just to get to break even and have it rip up off of me. I was so mad. Dude, oh, I was heated. Heated for being such a fool. Okay. Anyway, um, Tesla's going to have some volatility today. That's crazy. Musk is like, yo, check it. <laughs> Leave me alone. All right. Do -do -do -do. Macro headlines. Uh, has been the main driver for broader markets of late, while individual earnings results from companies have been a focus as well. The Russia-Ukraine crisis has been unnerving investors at a time when markets are already struggling because of concern that the pace of monetary policy tightening to slow the surging inflation and prices will crimp U.S. growth. Wall Street's main indexes cut early losses to end mixed on Wednesday after the minutes from the Fed uh, the Fed Reserve's most recent monetary policy offered no surprises to investors. Fed officials last month agreed that with inflation widening its grip on the economy and employment strong, it was time to tighten monetary policy, but also that any decisions would depend on a meeting by meeting, meeting analysis of data, according to the minutes of the January 25th, 26th policy meeting in Asian markets. The Nikkei index dropped 277 points or 0.8%. Shanghai inched higher. Uh, and Hang Sen, U.S. and what U.N. says evidence on the ground is that Russia is moving towards an imminent invasion. 
yeah, dude, stuff's going bad. Um, oh, it's going to be so fun to trade today. Uh, the DAX, little change, FT, FTSE 100 is down 50 points. Gold prices are jumping to fresh three months high while oil slips. Didn't we say that gold was on a thing and that we would be okay to trade it? Absolutely. Let's do this, shall we? All right, morning briefing. Good morning, everyone. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Mm. I'm so silly. I am so silly. Can't believe I did that. I cannot believe I did that. second here all right so oh gosh that really hurt who was here first morning johnny <laughs> you too man what's up killer uh terry welcome rafa rafa i'm sorry if i messed up your name what's up green life and watch list how are you okay so sundial i the the deal with sundial is this right there's not enough um it's sub it's a penny stock and the flow index doesn't do a good job of tracking penny stocks um i can look at it real quick for you right i don't think we're gonna get flow index on it so if, um just from my perspective with this is that it's got a bull flag forming, right? Uh, a blowout of the four hour top, right? Above 70, you hit 73 and get some rejection at the 200 day. If you get enough, enough momentum and conviction to get above 73, 80, 85 incoming is real, is, is what it's, what's gonna happen, right? So from this weekly bottom, right? This white weekly bottom, we're currently at the weekly mid, now stocks will either ping pong back and forth, right? Or um, they'll just make the, com <clears throat> they complete the cycle. So from the daily, from the weekly daily bottom, it came up and touched the weekly mid, right? From the weekly mid or from the daily mid, from the daily mid, it came up and touched the daily bot top. Weekly bottom, we're at the weekly mid now. Next stop would be the weekly top. Right, and as we get to lower and lower time frames, it's the same principle. So, green is four hour, four hour bottom, four hour mid, four hour top, back to the four hour mid. We do have stack positive moving averages, thirteen twenty one thirty four. We're above the fifty, right? We have some long term squeezes happening here. We're double green, right? Ready and fires kind of compressing, right? So, looking for a MACD crossover. Or for these primary or these secondary cycles here, which are the lower time frames, to cycle back down to support, give us a bull flag breakout, and then we just on that breakout we ride this purple line, which is well for me it's the thirteen. I used to uh, use the nine EMA. A lot of people can, a lot of people still use the eight EMA, right? But on the bull flag, on the breakout of this bull flag, right? You ride it up until you close below your nine or your 13 uh, exponential moving average. Okay. That's pretty positive and it's pretty bullish right now. So if you're looking to get, right, if you're looking to scalp, you know, five, five or six cents, I think you probably do that. Right. Uh, this 200 day is of concern. So off of the mid to the top, right? That's pretty much a guaranteed move, right? Um, above the top, we need to back test it, hold it for support, and then we rally up. We know we're going to have resistance seventy three dollars or seventy three cents. Okay, that's Sundial. Um, that's how you trade penny stocks. Pretty easy. Flow trade doesn't really help us out with that. Okay, so uh, thanks for showing up and supporting us. Make sure you hit the like button, por favor, please. Really, really appreciate it. 
Y'all want to look at NVIDIA, AMD, right? We will look at those options for show. Uh, let's look at Specific Spy and Tolesla. Supposedly, Laz is supposed to be back in the country. We will see. We will see. Ukraine armed forces fire mortar shells. No, no, no. Um, what? They halted NQ Futures try twice last night. Hmm. I have to check that out. Okay. All right. So overall market conditions, and then we will get into it. I'm digging this chart. I really might have to start using this a little bit more. Right, right. Riggedy, right. Change my colors. I don't even remember what I had. I know I had some obnoxious green. And then... Is it that? All right, so let me see here. Just flip back and forth between these two. Yeah, obnoxious green and then white. Maybe. All right, so just give me this. Give me a second. Sorry, I should have done this before y'all showed up, but I'm a little I'm so slack in these days. All right, there we go. All right, Cisco, like I said, I'm digging this chart. I'm digging it. Oh, that's a daily mid. What is this then? I don't think I can chill with that color. I'm used to my four hours being green. All right, regardless. Anyway, all right, let's look at the futures. Oh, ho, ho. what happened there? Well, that's when that news about Russia came out. Oh, you know what? I didn't even have this turn on. Dang it. I apologize. My sad. My sad. It was looking good, too. Stack positive moving averages, but we broke below 200. Today is going to be a down day. Uh, watch for the Russell to hold. If it Russell can hold, Russell might have a nice little pop. Uh, the end's coming back down to test that level. Look at crude ripping. Rip, rip, ripper. And gold is having a move. Look at that. 127 extension. This is where its profit taking takes place. And look for some pullbacks. Oh, I'm excited to look at futures today. When you get excited to look at the futures. All right. So this is our futures chart layout. Um, I have been doing what I told you I was going to do and looking at the voodoo lines a little bit more closely, right? And so let me just bring these out. From order of importance, you've got fire lines, tree lines, snow lines, or sky lines, snow lines, sky lines, snow lines, sky lines. Um, Dang it. Get rid of it, didn't I? US Envoy to UN says evidence on the ground Russia is moving towards an imminent invasion. This is a crucial moment. Um, one second. So these voodoo lines, right? That's they really are what they say they are. They're voodoo. Ooh, do I do I want to grab the dead cat? Do I want to try to grab the bounce here? Is this the bottom? Am I trying to call the bottom? I think we've got a little bit further to go. All right. So I'll just scan through that and let y'all know. 
But basically, red is the most important. All right, these are fire lines. Then you have tree lines. Then you have white, which are snow lines. Then you have violent, which are sky lines. And then the dash for the moguls. So look at how price interacts with these, right? So off of this fire line, right up to the next fire line, right? There's a move back down on the way up. Resistance of these tree lines, tree lines, support. Okay. So the um, voodoo lines are super important and we will get those incorporated into a strategy. See how these snow lines can offer support and offer resistance from snow line to snow line. There's a move rally up, right? Break through it, back test it for the next move up, right? So what has happened with us? Okay. We pulled back, we rallied up, right? This is resistance. We came back. We couldn't get through it again. We still got that 200 day, right? The 200 days right at our 618 retracement, which is right at our high, right? So we pulled back. We came down and we kissed the 382. We rallied up, rallied up, right? A little bit of a pullback. We held the 200, right? So we're holding in the 200 going into today. If we crack down below this key level, right? This 4440. That's a pretty significant level. Um, lots of consolidation has been happening here. So I would say below, like, the, is this a bull flag forming? Very possibly. We could get a bull flag pop off of the 200 day for a move to 4,500, 4,510, and then I'm going to target 4,538 as the initial first target. Okay. Now, so that would be the snow line to snow line move. Contrarian, if this bull flag fires breaks the downside, which could very easily do. So start if we get some closes below 4440, right? We're really like uh, we've given back the entire move overnight. So we start going lower, then we're gonna look at 4399, so 4400, just call it psychological level for a move back down here to 4371. Okay. One, two, three. So I I spent some time watching the Elliott Wave analysis of this move, and it's been determined that we could possibly we're in a possible corrective pattern that could take a while, right, all the way up to this purple line, which is March FOMC date. Uh, I'm liking this wedge, right? It's just forming a flag. Actually, means forming a wedge, right? Compressing, 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 it's going to pop at some point, right? It's going to pop, we're going to lock, and then it may just rock it, pop, lock, and rock it, pop, lock, and rock it. <laughs> Dude, should I do it? Should I make this shirt? Pop, lock, and rock it? Rock it, pop, lock, and rock it? Maybe. All right. We will see. However, this is bearish, right? If this was a stock and we were like, oh, it's below below the 50, below the 200, we would be like, Psh, it was weighed, right? So squeezing, we we're holding the 21 pretty decently, okay? Um, I don't know what I can do to make these lines a little easier to see. I think that's pretty all right. And it's pretty decent, right? So this is a four hour. We are coming up to a, like really a decision point. Probably today. We're either going to break long or we're going to break short, right? Today is that kind of decision day and it's shaping up to be a pretty decent one. Mm, my face still hurts a little bit. All right. Lower time frames, intraday trading, right? We're just, look at that. Did we do it? Did we, did we tip our hand? Did we say we're going to the long side? I don't know. Looks like we might have, like, it, technically that's a break to the, to the, to the long. Technically speaking, do the, the computers going to see it that way? Um, they might, they might, um, or Or it's a big old head fake. 
Jeez. Y'all can see that, right? What I'm looking at is this. This is consolidation between these mogul lines, right? And this is kind of doing what we said it was going to do. It's going to just chop. Okay, so uh, 50 is above the 200, 21 cross over the 50. Like, theoretically, we should get a pop to the long side, right? Um, this purple is yesterday's high at 44.70, right? And we've got a good base of support here. Right. If I were to guess, I would say we're going to go long today, right? We're going to come back down. Betcha there's a trend line in here somewhere, right? Thought I had a channel. If I were to draw this as a channel, right? I've learned um, that channels are super important when drawing support. Like there's a channel there. It hasn't broken the channel, right? Pretty decent little move. However, we're below the 200. We got a 50, 21 crossover. So lots of stuff are gonna happen today. We're gonna get some sh stuff figured out, uh, probably by noon, okay? Yeah, probably about noon. Pretty decent look there. Okay. All right. So that is the ES. All right. Let's move over to speed up a little bit. All right. The nasty NASDAQ. The nasty DAC. The nasty DAC. The nasty NASDAQ. All right. So what do we got going on here? Well, My symmetry is off a little bit, right, on this. Maybe not, though. So what happened? We pulled back, right? All right, so we pull back to this tree line. We're holding that tree line. The next move would be up to the snow line. Snow line, right? And then finally up to the tree line. So there's the move. However, we're being rejected, right? So 14,000. Like we held that tree line pretty tight. We have negatively stacked moving averages, right? The 200 has stuffed us every time we've attempted it. That We haven't even made a rally to the 21. Maybe we get that today, right? Up to the previous highs. Uh, 14,770, right? A uh, little bit of a wedge forming here. A little bit of a little minor flag forming here that could fire along. Could also fire short. So below 14.4335. Let's just call it, yeah, 14.3.50. Is that right? No. Maybe it is. Mm. 14,400, right? Below that, 14,300. 14,000, and then this guy here. Again, we're being stuffed between a 50% and a 618 retracement from this low to this high. Usually we pull back here and we rip out to the 144. We didn't, we got stuffed, we came back down, we're reattempting it. Do we get that move up? Okay, so it would be tree. It would be tree line to tree line, which is way up here. All right, breaking it down to the four iron, and I really got to get a move on it. Let's 
See how we're just kind of being stuffed between the 50% and the 618 retracement. There's a mogul line right there. That is the, um, it's a skyline, sorry. Ooh, this is gonna be ugly. Hold on, I'm gonna sell this. Oh, I got a pretty good entry on this. This little next little possible drop on the ES. Ooh, it's looking like, oh, it's going to get, oh man. All right, let me bring this down. Let me show you what's going on. So overnight, I saw a rip to failure to rip, rip, failure, right? This 200 is causing havoc. This is a three minute 200, right? We can't, we can't maintain this on the three minute. We fell down, we back tested the 50, 200 possible crossover. If the cross, if the 50 crosses over the 200, right? Then we can start getting some static positive moving averages and looking, right, for this kind of move here, right? The one from here to here, right? However, if, for some reason, this 50 gets rejected off of this 200, then we have a larger downside move that we really got to be concerned with. All right, we're off some key levels of support. So going to keep an eye on, on that. <laughs> All right. Directionally, we maintain this trend line. We've got forming a wedge, right? We are forming a wedge. However, we're above the 200 on the 30, so this is bullish, right? So we're kind of bullish on it. Kind of bullish. There goes crude. Taking a dump. The Dow's going to drop. The Russell's going to drop. Mm. So again, when when we get to crude, I'm going to show you this, this exact layout right here. This wedge breakout on crude is a good thing to see. All right, I'm going to keep moving. Oh, no, yeah, we're bloody today. I think, I think, well, uh, <laughs> I've been having some bad luck lately. So I don't know what it is. I think I'm trying to do too many different things instead of just focusing on two or three things and ex executing exceptionally. All right, so this is a Dow. The Dow was looking the best. Now it's kind of having some problems getting back above its 200. So above 34.933, then we got the 200 day. So this rally to the 200, are they selling this for the larger move to the downside, right? Or is this just a retrace for the next move up? All right, what I don't have on here is, I do have the voodoo lines. Where are they? Oh, you know what? There we go. We're out of fire line up to snow line, right? So this is a daily. Again, another wedge forming, breaking it down to the four hour. Oh, I got stopped out. Ooh, unfortunately, got stopped out. Okay, this 200 on the four hour, the two hour, it's causing some resistance, right? 
more of a pullback, breaking it down to the 30 minute. Double top, 34.850. Okay, trying to stack our moving averages positive right off of that skyline. We got a skyline target up here, right? All right, so up day in the Dow, very possible. Oh, we did touch it. Oh, I should have sold that. Oh, silly me. Silly, silly me. Maybe we can, maybe we can get sneaky. All right, we're going to try scalping some futures here real quick. Is this a cup of handle? It uh, could be. Uh, who knows? All right. And then the old Russell. Ye old Russell. Okay. See how these snow lines can be resistance? Tree lines can be support, right? So in order of importance, red, green, white, purple, and then dashed. So red is obviously your primary. Red and green are your primaries. White and purple are your secondaries, right? So primary support to secondary resistance, right? Um, negatively stacked moving averages, overhead resistance, off of a tree line, right? Which is off of support. Look for the move up to resistance, right? Previous low, previous high, previous high. We are still in this dang zone right here. We are still in that zone. I mean, so the Russell short below 2052 for support to 2040. If we get below 2040, we hit 2000, right? Contrarian bounce off of this low 2052 for a move up to 2104, okay? We hit 2075 pre-market, right? So bull flags are forming all over the place, right? Um, they are forming all over the place. Break it down to the four hour, right? It's 200 day, it's gonna be resistance, right? From purple line to purple line. Currently we're below it, so we could anticipate a move back to the green tree line for support, right? Above above this um, purple line, right? Skyline, snow line. Pretty easy move to see. 2150 stacked, it's a four hour, looking at down on 30 minute. You know, we're just, we're in a trading zone, unfortunately. Come on, load up. Load up. Right. <clears throat> a little easier to see there. As long as prices, as long as prices are between the two moving averages, it's going to squeeze. It's going to build up um, momentum, basically. Alrighty. Ooh, that's kind of an ugly candle, Mr. NQ. It just, just decided it wanted to form a megaphone. All right. And then finally, I'll do it on time. Uh, gold. And I think it was Watchlist that um, got us turned on to gold, right? Got us hit to gold. What's happening with it? Big moves. All right, so this is that. Uh, look at this big giant wedge. Remember, I was talking about wedge breakout. Oh, look at there. Looky, 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 looky. Remember, I also said, "Oh, gold, please don't form that giant broadening pattern." Right. Well, 
If it did, it would be huge. So we I don't think we need to even worry about that. Let's get rid of that sucker. All right, rally up right off of support, right up to that 1414. Remember, I keep talking about my secret fib extension that I love above all else. Well, there it was, it hit it. So when I bring this down to lower time frames, I don't know if it was a four or the 30 minute. I think it might've been the 30 minute. Yeah, it was the 30 minute. Nice support, right? Broke some of this trend line stuff and just melted all the way up and it had to have been the 30 minute. So uh, FIB extension from high to the low, it went all the way up to this 1414. It's breaking through it. I don't know if it hits 1618 um, or pulls back, but gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous cup and handle. Lots of things you could have done there, right? Super pat stock, super positive moving averages, right? 215200 all the way from the four minute or the thirty minute up to the four hour and the daily. This is a momentum play. We just have everything going for us, right? Uh, next level would be. Uh, we're. Let me move our supply, come on. Move our supply zone. I think that's accurate. We're just now coming into a supply zone. that fib we can write some new levels down right i think it's important to see how these things shake out right just know that this white line right here this is our mean right this is the regression line we're currently at about one standard deviation away from the regression line we can go up to two standards right without it being too overextended so yeah, gold should be pretty fun today. All right, crude is, looks like it pulled back to some support and should be recovering bonds, right, all the way down. They failed, they've got a little bit of support here, but just downtrending, and then the end is downtrending. Okay, real quick, I gotta wake up some people. I will be right back. Get me your plays, uh, we will get into them. I wanna, sh we'll just leave you with our Dilly, oh, did I say it? Did I say Dilly Dally Daily? And then I also had another one. Oh, I had a good t-shirt idea. What was it? What was that? Oh, what was the t-shirt idea? Ah. It was for the NAS oh, Nasty NASDAQ. And then what else was there? There was another one. Oh, was it Nasty NASDAQ? Nasty NASDAQ. Ooh, that's a big drop. Big old drop. -o. I'm just going to go ahead and move my stop out of the way. No stop losses. Um, all right. So. Ooh, ooh, ouch, ouch, um, what came out? Something just hit. I'm looking for 44.42 to hold. I'd be willing to go as low as 44.40, right? Ooh, it's ugly. God, what is so many Tesla puts? I'm having some, I'm going through some changes. 
Going through changes. Hold on. Those are some big drops. Those are nasty candles. Not a big point move, but it's just the, the structure is ugly to see. And it's across the board, except for gold, crude, and bonds. The yen is moving up. Like we're not having big massive point drops, right? It's only like it's only a 10 point drop right now, but look at the pattern, right? Look at what it's doing. It's coming back. It just broke through retracement. It's coming up through to some. It's just. I'm going to go ahead and move my stop to some obscene way out of the way. 43, 4338. I put my target, my downside target on the ES. Right. Do I want to dip a quick 40 or do I want to try to hold out for more? Well, let's do this. I'll make at least $15 off of this trade. All right, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And you know what? I totally forgot. <laughs> I have got to get ready to stream um, the open. Wow. What is happening? Hold on. Um, sorry, I'm just looking through to see if I can figure out U.S. stock and extend the clients. Uh, U.S. has received Russia response to security proposals. Um, apps falling back towards. Uh, I don't know. I'm not really seeing any news coming through that's that's gonna give us an indication as to why this is happening. I just know that we broke that trend line. We broke that wedge, and now we have a downside target. But no, below this skyline, right? Um, oof, we're selling off, okay? Across the board, selling off the end, rather than bonds rallying, crudes rallying, and golds rallying. So remember, top row down, bottom row up, that's the way we like to make money. Top row, bottom row up, top row down, bloodbath. Okay. Um, I'm up 100 bucks on my little ES scalp that I got going on here. Uh, I'm just going to let it go. And I can't believe I sold my stupid Tesla put yesterday. Jeez. What is wrong with me? I had the 850s, the 850 puts. 
right? Spies down, Q's down, SPX, NVIDIA. NVIDIA's kind of just chilling. This Google drop, though, it's pretty nasty. And AMD is flushing. Apple's flushing. Um, you know, I think I'm gonna, I'll take my 75 bucks and call it a day. Yeah, well, you know what? We're gonna leave it right there. Uh, regardless, I'm gonna make fifty to sixty bucks off of this downside pull, pullback. All right, real quick, let me get through these. I forgot I had to stream the open, so one more second. Ready? Did you wait? Okay. Come on. Alrighty, so there's some pullbacks in the indexes, right? Hmm, what's happening? What is going on? Where's all this coming from? Ooh, Apple broke down through support. Tesla's bouncing off of it. The spy is selling off. Oh, QQQ. So, oh, this is just ugly. So, with that being said, I'm going to go through these really quickly, and I'm still not seeing any news. Marines landed a high speed ship with their jetpacks. No. Amazon removes BLM from charity platform amid growing concerns over lack of financial transparency. I'm not just seeing I'm not seeing any news that's um, going to give me any indication as to why we're getting that drop. Uh, let's check Forex Factory real quick. Maybe it was a maybe it was some some news. Oh, that's why. Jeez, unemployment claims up twenty thousand building permits. That's decent. Housing starts down. Uh, that's probably why right there. Bad unemployment claims. What? And then lowered manufacturing index. Right? Ugh. That's ugly. Yo, 4433? If it doesn't hold, it's going to get super ugly. Oh, bloodbath today. Uh, impossible tender nuggets are now available at AMC. City today lowered its price target on Disney to 200 from 210 and Apple's at the 50 day. Okay. Mm, All right. Real quick. I had to run through these. Sorry. It took forever on doing the other stuff. All I know you guys, all you care about is this part right here. NVIDIA. Uh, with the earnings at Dart, was just, I got to go through it quickly there. All right, so NVIDIA flow index is currently coming up into some resistance. Okay, as you can see here, if it can break through and back test resistance and move up to the next level of resistance, and we can get some continued strength in NVIDIA. NVIDIA, remember, did have some pretty decent earnings. It's holding its trend line. Big old wedge forming right here. We got some regular and some dark pull support. All right. However, contrarian, if for some reason NVIDIA can't maintain this and we trade down to the 263, this red and uh, red and blue dark pull and block red or block level of base, right, is your downside target. So 260. Um, NVIDIA is currently trading 260, right? So we're trading down in here below that. 
261 is a dark pool level. We have magnets down to this side. We have 258 magnets. If the flow index, right? Kind of choppy, choppy, choppy. Made a higher low, it's making a higher high. If it can continue to make higher lows and higher highs, it should pull price up with it. However, market conditions will prevail. I don't anticipate NVIDIA being a market outperformer today. All right, maybe next week it can start getting a little bit of momentum going on. Uh, AMD, AMD is next up on our list. And with AMD, we've got the flow index is trading with price action. One second here. All right, so AMD We've got a little bit of bullish divert or bearish divergence here, right? But this is mainly just trading with price. Um, AMD and I'm going to short the futures again. Um, so 115, 114, 41, 115, is pretty significant level of support below that, uh, 111 is your downside target, right? So if the flow index continues to sell off and doesn't recover here and go and make a higher high like it's done over here. So if it doesn't follow its upward trend line, and if it doesn't follow this move here, so if this continues to pull back, we can see price action come down below 114, right? We come fill this little gap over here, right? 105, 111, it can get pretty, pretty nasty, pretty quick. All right, what's up next? The dilly dally daily. Well, so it wasn't the daily dilly down the dilly dally daily. It's a dilly dally daily, but it's also the nasty NASDAQ. All right, um, spy. Um, I'm bearish on spy, to be honest with you. It starts below 436. We get to move back down to 425, excuse me, uh, 427. Uh, we kind of filled the gap a little bit. All right, so when you have a cluster here and a cluster here, there's your range above it. We go long, but look at what the flow index is doing. It's dragging price back down with it. Um, based on what's happening right now in the in the futures market, four four three, we're we're down here at four forty, right? So. Right, the spy is trading at 442, 442. So we've broken support. Now we come back down and test our previous base, right? 440 psychological, 436 um, potential. Tesla, all right, uh, 900 downside target below 900. We gap fill back down to 875. Those 875 puts that I had oh, would be paying today. Grr, grr, animal. Grr, grr, grr. Okay. There's also this, see so how it did fill this gap right here. So Tesla does like to fill the gap. So look for downside plays on Tesla today. Okay. Next up on the list was, I'll look at the options in a second. Um, I do have to hurry though. Snow, USO, and Squirrel. Where? Um, so no, this is just bearish divergence. Super bearish. 300 magnet to the downside. I don't know what it's trading at now, but I would target 300 is probably below that, to be honest with you. Mm. Yeah, they cracked 300. 
Uh, next downside move on snow is 295. Yeah, this is bearish, super bearish. 295. Yep, 295 move. Okay, that divergence, this bearish divergence is complete. Now look for price to continue to be pulled down with it. Um, US oil, the flow index, this is a really minor bullish divergence, right? Wedge forming for and so USO um, look for look for this wedge breakout. I would go long above sixty four eighty for a move to sixty five fifty. Um, below sixty four thirty seven, we back test sixty three ninety six. Below that, we come back down to 63, okay? Uh, next up was Square. Square is forming a wedge. The flow index is consolidating, right? It really is. There's, it's range bound between these two levels. Um, as long as this happens, it's, the flow index isn't gonna give us a clue as to what it wants to do. But look for your other technical support, right? Or technical analysis, right? If we break that support, we come back down and test 107.53. Below that, we fill the gap down to 103, okay? Um, that would mean the flow index breaks down below its, below its support and starts pulling price down with it. And I think that's it. I got to run. Oh, you want me to look at... Uh, AMD options. Let me grab those real quick. AMD options. All right, sorry about that. Ooh, A, oh, that's Hasbro. <laughs> I was like, look at the gap on AMD. All right. So what I'm seeing is with AMD is we've got Got a wedge that's forming, right? You know, we're coming up to the pressure from that wedge is going to break one side or the other. All right. So far, we're negatively stacked. Um, options, I would look at long above 117.50. We'll go short below. There's a move from 113 to 110. Right below 110, it's a pretty big move back down to 107. What is this madness? Um, I don't know what's up with that. Did we find uh, did we find a hole in the matrix? We may have. There 
may be a glitch in the matrix. All right, so I got stopped out. Currently up net. How is that even possible? Net thirty five dollars on the day. I only made seventy. All right. Um, there may be a glitch in the matrix. One of five, one tens. Those look pretty decent. The one ten puts, or the the one hundred the hundred dollar puts look pretty decent. And then as far as calls are concerned, uh, I'm not really seeing anything super attractive on the call side. Maybe. Yeah, I'm just not seeing it. I like the downside for AMD. So if we did go long, we'd go 121. Twenty-five above one twenty-five, we get one thirty-three. One thirties next month expiring, pretty decent. Okay. All right, I got to run. Um, thanks for joining me. I'm Dark Paul Algo. I'll just see you all tomorrow. I'll leave you with our last little screenshot of what's a little bit of recovery happening with our futures, right? I think this, I don't know, we just got to be careful. Um, possible, right? 50% retracement, it's key level. All right, we're coming back to previous lows. We're at some key levels now. We really are, okay? Uh, rejection at these levels, I think we see a downside day. So, all right, have a great day. Stay safe, stay green. I'll see you all in the chat. Um... Yeah, hit me up in Discord. Let's have some let's have some talks, shall we? Bye now.